Welcome to Stratford. As usual, this video is designed as an aid to exploration. Log off the computer, pull up this video on your phone, and go for a walk. Each time I'm done talking about a building, I'll throw up a map to get you to the next one. Pause the video and take a stroll. Indeed, feel free to wander off script for a while. I'll still be there when you get to the next site, and there's always another side street to explore. The first permanent building in Stratford was the Shakespeare Inn, erected in 1832. At the time, the site of the future town was part of the Canada Company's holdings east of Lake Huron, and known locally as Little Thames. Over the next 20 years, a small but promising farming centre developed along the banks of the Avon River. Genuine prosperity, however, arrived with the railway. The first trains arrived in Stratford in 1856, in which year two railways arrived within months of one another. The first was the Grand Trunk Railway, building an east-west line from Toronto to London and Sarnia. The second was the Buffalo, Brantford and Godrich, a financially shaky enterprise, building a railway through southwestern Ontario between its namesake cities. Within a decade, the Buffalo, Brantford and Godrich had collapsed financially, bought out by the Grand Trunk. With the addition of two north-south railways, also amalgamated into the Grand Trunk, Stratford developed into a major railway hub, a role which dominated nearly a century of its history. The decline of the railways in Stratford in the mid-20th century was counterbalanced by the rise of the Stratford Festival, a summer Shakespearean festival, in 1953. This, along with the city's remarkably well-preserved Victorian core, has allowed Stratford to develop into a popular summer destination. Our walk today begins at the city's railway station, at the intersection of Shakespeare and Nile streets. The impressive brick structure on the south side of Shakespeare Street was the Grand Trunk Railway's 4th Stratford Station, erected in 1913. It replaced a simple, if large, wooden structure which had dated to 1870. When built, the station featured an impressive crenellated tower on the north side, an ornament which has since been removed. The freight yards stretching to the southeast from the station building once acted as a major railway hub, with trains departing for Owen Sound, Godrich, Sarnia, London, Brantford and Toronto, among others. Walk a block east along Shakespeare Street to Downey Street. The large building visible through the trees on the west side of Downey Street is the Grand Trunk Locomotive Shops. Once far and away the largest employer in Stratford, the shops did heavy repair work on steam locomotives from across the railways network in Ontario. The first facilities on the site were erected in 1871 and were capable of handling 27 locomotives at a time. As the Grand Trunk Railway expanded across Ontario, the Stratford facilities were repeatedly expanded, with the Victorian shops being entirely replaced by later construction. The oldest portion of the facility still standing dates to 1909. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the shops were renowned also for their training facilities, where young men were taught mechanical principles, drafting, and management. The introduction of diesel locomotives after the Second World War doomed the facility, and the last locomotive was repaired here in 1964. Following a recent preservation fight, the facility is going to be renovated in the coming years. Walk a block up Downey Street to Waterloo Street, then continue north up Waterloo to the intersection of Waterloo and Duro. The church on the southeast corner of Waterloo and Duro is St. Paul's Anglican. The parish was intended to serve the railway workers living in the area, and indeed, for its first several months, worshipped in a spare room provided by the Grand Trunk. In 1875, the parish constructed a wood frame structure, and in 1906, the present brick church was erected. Across the street, on the northeast corner of Waterloo and Duro is St. John's United Church, a late Gothic structure erected in 1927 to plans by Toronto architect Stephen Kuhn. Unlike in other Canadian cities, both of Stratford's Presbyterian congregations had voted against joining the Methodists in 1925. Dissenting Presbyterians from both congregations proceeded to form a new congregation. If you're interested in Stratford's industrial architecture, consider walking six blocks east on Duro Street to Trinity to see the McLoggan Furniture Factory. Erected in 1901 to replace an earlier building destroyed by fire, the factory was largely responsible for Stratford's reputation as a furniture center in the early 20th century. Otherwise, or when you're finished, return to Downey Street and walk two blocks north to Brunswick. The Avon Theatre, on the northeast corner of Downey and George, stands on the site of the Theatre Albert, an important Stratford theatre erected in the early 20th century and partially incorporated into the Avon. The open space stretching west from the corner of Downey and Brunswick was acquired by Stratford in 1855 to serve as a public market. 
An impressive classical structure was erected on the north side of the Market Square two years later, in 1857, designed by William Thomas, a Toronto architect. The new structure contained space for the market on the ground floor and meeting space for the newly formed village of Stratford, space which doubled as a theatre and concert hall, above. One of the most elegant structures in the community, Stratford's original town hall was unfortunately lost to a disastrous fire in 1897. The three remaining sides of the Market Square are flanked by a collection of excellent Victorian facades, most notably the Worth Block at 38 to 40 Wellington Street, erected in 1880 as a hotel. The market itself, however, is long gone, replaced as early as 1902 with a parking lot. Walk around to the front of the City Hall. Unlike the 1857 structure, Stratford's replacement City Hall was erected with its back to the city's market. It is, however, a remarkable structure, designed by Toronto architect George King and erected in 1900. The structure is an ornate red brick building featuring Flemish ornamentation and an impressive roof line. Nearly lost to the city of Stratford, the city seriously considered demolishing the building in the 1960s, but a nascent preservation movement rallied around the structure, sparking the tradition of architectural preservation which has resulted in today's Stratford. From City Hall, walk a block east on Albert Street to the intersection of Albert and Waterloo. The castle-like structure on the northwest corner of Albert and Waterloo is Stratford's Armory, erected in 1904 to plans by McBride and Farncombe, one of several armories built across Canada at the time to nearly identical plans. The similar structures allowed the federal government to project a unified image across the country. The structure still serves its original function. Across the street, on the southwest corner of Albert and Waterloo, is the site of Stratford's first dedicated fire hall, erected in 1895. Turn left, walking a block north on Waterloo Street to the Ontario Street. The church on the northwest corner of Ontario and Waterloo is Knox Presbyterian, founded in 1843 by a group of dissenters from St. Andrew's Presbyterian. For half a decade, the question of which congregation owned the church on St. Andrew's Street remained a bone of contention, but by 1859 it had become clear that Knox would need to erect accommodation of their own, which they did on the present site. The existing church is the third on the site. By 1870, the congregation had grown large and prosperous enough to engage Alexander Hepburn to design a large Gothic church on the site, a structure whose dominating tower was widely praised as one of the finest in the region. The church, however, was destroyed in a 1913 fire. The present structure was built shortly thereafter. Turn left and walk a block down Ontario Street. Ontario Street has been Stratford's main retail strip for the majority of the city's history and remains a lively commercial avenue today. Stop at the intersection of Ontario and Erie Streets. The park on the northeast corner of Ontario and Erie occupies the site of Stratford's 1883 post office. A sturdy Romanesque structure, the post office's clock tower was an important Ontario Street landmark for nearly three generations. Expanded several times in the late 19th century, the post office was deemed obsolete and demolished in 1961, arguably Stratford's greatest architectural loss. Across the street from the post office, Note the Gordon Block, a three-story red brick building erected in 1894. The building was the first in Stratford to be framed in steel, not wood. Turn right onto Erie Street and walk two blocks northeast along the Avon to Waterloo. The parks along the river were originally occupied by mills taking advantage of the power supplied by the river, and they remained industrial lands into the 20th century. Following a fire, however, much of the land was acquired by the city. In 1906, Shortly after the creation of a parks board, the Canadian Pacific Railway submitted a plan to construct a new railway to Stratford, the tracks running along the south shore of the Avon. A protracted and bitter fight ensued, pitting the proponents of the railway against the proponents of the parks system. It wasn't until 1912 that the plan for a new railway was permanently shelved, and the creation of a parks system along the Avon could proceed with vigour. Turn left on Waterloo Street, and walk two blocks north to the intersection of Waterloo and Elizabeth Streets. The building set back from the southeast corner of Waterloo and Elizabeth is the former Falstaff School. When Stratford divided itself into five wards in 1862, it played on the city's name, giving each of the new wards a Shakespearean name, Avon, Falstaff, Hamlet, Romeo, and Shakespeare. Each of the wards eventually developed a school, with the original Falstaff School being established in 1874. The current collegiate Gothic structure was erected in 1929, designed by Stratford architect James Russell. Turn left and walk a block west on Elizabeth Street to Mornington. Turn left again, 
walking a block southwest to the corner of Mornington and Hamilton. The church on the southeast corner of Mornington and Hamilton is St. James Anglican, Stratford's oldest Anglican congregation. The parish originated with a group of Anglicans meeting in the Shakespeare Hotel in 1843, and it wasn't until 1849 that a permanent home was built. The present church, designed by Thomas Gundy in 1870, is one of the finest structures in Stratford, and well worth stepping into. Always a centre for the arts, the Choir of St. James was the first choir established in Perth County, and the church was also the first in the region to accompany worship with instruments. The church's bell tower was added several years after the building's completion by local architect Robert Barber, and continues to be a landmark visible across the Avon River. Walk two blocks southwest on Mornington Street to Huron, then turn right, walking up Huron Street. You are looking for the large brick church on your right. The first Roman Catholic Mass in Stratford was celebrated in 1832, but for some time the settlement was served sporadically by traveling priests. It wasn't until the 1840 that a proper parish was established, and not until 1856 the Catholic priests took up permanent residence in Stratford as rector of St. Joseph's. The Catholic community, however, grew rapidly as Stratford boomed in the mid-19th century, and by 1868 they felt confident enough to erect the present St. Joseph's Church, designed by Brantford architect John Turner. Return down Huron Street, crossing the Avon River. Immediately to your right upon crossing the Avon are the Shakespeare Gardens. The gardens were once the site of the Dufton Willen Mills, of which only the smokestack survives, transformed into a bird shelter. From the gardens you can get an excellent view of the Huron Street Bridge you just crossed, a double-arched stone bridge erected in 1885. Continue south to the intersection of Huron and Ontario Streets. The structure dominating the west end of Ontario Street is the Perth County Courthouse, erected in 1887 by London architect George Durand. When Perth County was established in 1853, the first county council had taken an excessively frugal approach to housing the courthouse and jail erecting structures which were inadequate from the day of their opening. Despite frequent complaints from judges, legal staff, and even the province, which demanded that the structures be replaced in 1871, the county refused to spend additional money on the structures. Matters came to a head in 1884, when Judge Adam Wilson refused to meet in the courtroom, convening court instead in Stratford City Hall, much to the city's surprise and annoyance. Determined not to suffer such an embarrassment again, the County of Perth finally engaged George Duran to construct new facilities for the county. The 1887 courthouse is an ornate but dignified structure, dominating views both down Ontario Street and across the Avon River. Just south of the courthouse, on the southwest corner of St. Andrew and Church Street, is Stratford's Carnegie Library. Erected in 1903, using money from the Carnegie Foundation, the building was opened without an official ceremony as many of Stratford's residents were deeply opposed to accepting money from Andrew Carnegie, an American industrialist whose labour policies were widely deplored. The classical structure still houses Stratford's library. Across St. Andrew's Street from the library, behind the courthouse, are Stratford's registry office and jail. Immediately to the west of the courthouse is the registry office. In the early days of settlement, registry offices were essential institutions distributing land to settlers and keeping track of changes in ownership. As the population grew, the purpose of the registry offices transitioned to tracking real estate transactions, and as the area developed, the workload of the office increased. The current building was erected in 1912 to plans by T.J. Hepburn and designed to match the courthouse and jail to either side of it. West of the registry office stands the Perth County Jail, erected in 1886 to plans by George Durand, as part of the same building campaign that resulted in the erection of the county courthouse. Across the street from the Perth County Jail is St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, the oldest congregation in Stratford, founded by the earliest Scottish settlers in the Stratford area in 1838. The current building is the result of several building projects, with the oldest surviving portion being erected in 1868 to plans by London architect William Robinson. Robinson's building, however, has been almost completely encased in later additions, the most notable of which occurred in 1899 and in 1911 when the church's tower was added. Our Stratford walk ends here. To return to the railway station, return to Ontario Street, then walk two blocks east along Ontario to Downey and seven blocks south along Downey to Shakespeare. Alternately, you could spend some time exploring the fine residential streets to your southwest. If you'd like a guide, there's a link in the description to a PDF prepared by Stratford's Heritage Community.